Hi, I'm Ashy, and this is Crafty with Ashy. Today we're going to talk about what a beginner crocheter should actually start with making. I'll show you a few different projects that you can make and I'll demonstrate the techniques also required. So everything that I'm talking about today and more is actually available on my blog at craftywithashy slash beginner crochet. So head over there if you want the written patterns or if you just want some more information about this. So as a beginner, uh, first things first, I recommend equipment wise to start with a size I, which is a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. This size, um, really is a little bit it's medium size but a little bit on the larger size of medium and this allows you to be able to see your stitches and the spaces in them um, a little bit more easily than a smaller hook uh, while also being really comfortable to hold it's um, not too bulky not too awkward it doesn't take a lot of force to hold um, so that's why it's good for beginners and you can start with an aluminum hook um, if you are prone to hand pain or arthritis, you can go straight into getting ergonomic hooks, but they are more expensive. And if you aren't sure if you're going to love crochet, you might just want to start with the more inexpensive uh, aluminum kind of regular hooks. Now, as far as yarn goes, I do recommend starting with a lighter color yarn. So this one is a kind of gold tone, um, but a lighter color yarn will allow you to see the details in your stitches a lot easier than a dark colored yarn. Um, so I do recommend starting with that. Also in terms of the kind of thickness, which is called weight, in the terms of the thickness of the yarn, I recommend starting with a weight four, which is a medium thickness yarn. Um, same as the hook, starting with something that's medium, um, versus really thin allows you to really see the details in the stitches a lot better and it's also not on that bulky side where it gets a little bit harder to work with and takes more force so just start with the medium weight um, there are so many different brands that you can choose i love hobby lobby and i like their i love this yarn brand um, it's inexpensive and it is pretty good quality and it's really soft for an acrylic yarn which um, is a synthetic yarn none of that really matters pick a yarn that you like you like the feel of you want to work with but um, I do like the I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby so in terms of the stitches so this is coming down to the actual technique of crocheting I really recommend that a beginner really just starts with the most basic stitches out there which is after you get the yarn on the hook a chain and the chain stitch is the first stitch it's kind of the foundation of most projects um, so I recommend starting with that and starting with this and kind of doing it repeatedly really allows you to get comfortable with how you hold your hook and how you are holding your yarn for your project and um, just the more comfortable you get with that the easier it's going to be to build on that foundation of the chain stitch for learning all of your other stitches um, also practicing the chain stitch over and over will help you learn how to maintain a consistent tension which is kind of the tightness of your stitches um, one of the things that's hard as you learn to crochet is because you're not comfortable holding your hook and your yarn sometimes you hold it tighter sometimes you hold it looser sometimes your stitches are tight sometimes they're loose and when this happens your project ends up kind of wavy and a little bit wonky so really the key to being having professional looking finished projects is to maintain a consistent tension and just practicing the chain stitch over and over at the beginning will help you build that foundation again of just being able to maintain that consistency um so there i know this sounds kind of boring i'm just going to be doing one stitch but there's actually a lot of different projects that you can make just with a chain stitch so i'm going to show you a couple examples and i made these patterns um these patterns are available at that same um blog post that crafty with ashy slash beginner crochet. So a few different things you can make, they're all accessories, but one is a bookmark. This is a super basic bookmark. I know it's not necessarily the most interesting bookmark, but hey, at least it's functional. Um, but this is just chain stitches. All of these are just chain stitches. So you can make that. You can make headbands. So I made this headband for my two-year-old, so that's why it's kind of 
small, it wouldn't fit me, but um, it's just three chains and then I braided them together after and it looked super adorable on her. Um, though most things look adorable on a like, cute little two year old girl, but you know, I'm also biased, she's my daughter. Um, so same thing, I made this bow and this is just a long chain that I kind of looped around and then tied the middle of and I just slipped this little alligator clip through the, the tie in the back and so it's just a little bow. Again, made it for my daughter. And then you can make bracelets. So I have a couple of options of those that I created as well. This is again, kind of that braiding technique. And I made this in 49ers colors. I'm not a 49er fan, but my sister is. So I plan to give that to her. And this is, this is my team, my Nebraska Cornhuskers. So I have my red and white and this, I just held two different strands of yarn together while I crocheted my chains. Um, I made this necklace. So uh, it just is, you know, a nice length. Um, it can kind of make your little black dress, I guess, um, personalized. So I just did the chains and kind of wrapped them together together to get this look. And then this one is a crazy long chain that I just looped together at the end. And my plan for this guy is a necklace and I just um, wrap it a bunch of times and then just put it over. And again, there is just kind of a personalized necklace. It's something nobody else is gonna have. And this one, I held actually three strands together. So this would be like maybe as you're getting more comfortable with the chains, um, try one of these. Uh, you might wanna use a bigger hook for this, but I did actually do this with my eye hook as well. So um, I just held three different ones together, three different colors to give it this kind of variation. And then I made a matching necklace and bracelet set. And so basically for this, I did chains of three different colors, different lengths. And then when I did the last one, I chained some extra and then wrapped them all together just to make it a single piece. And so we have just kind of varying lengths there on the necklace, the three different colors, and then the bracelet. I did all the same length, but same idea, three different colors, and then I wrapped one more chain around all of them to make a bracelet. And uh, it's just different colors, and it's got this, if you wanna show the wrapped part, you can show that, or you can have that kind of underneath and just have this layered bracelet look. So, I'm gonna show you how to do this bracelet with the chain wrapped around it. Um, and I'm gonna show you just all in one color just to make it easier. Again, it's a little bit harder to see your details when you're doing a dark color, but once you get kind of comfortable with the chain, you don't really need to see the details super well. So um, you should be able to progress to the other colors very quickly, but you could easily make this in just one color if you want it as well. So uh, let's go ahead and just go on to how to crochet those items. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to make this bracelet, as I already told you. Um, I'm just gonna use the one color just to, for ease of uh, this demonstration. Now I'm using that size I9 5.5 millimeter hook. I have a weight for yarn. So the first step to crocheting for any project is you have to get the yarn onto your hook. To do that, you're gonna make a slip knot. So just wrap your yarn around your finger, or make a loop out of it somehow, and then bring the yarn behind and pull up a loop. So I'm gonna leave a tail also. So I'm gonna put the yarn, push the yarn through the back, and then I'm just gonna hook that loop and I'm leaving the tail through the circle and then I'm just gonna pull it tight and make uh, basically a knot there for my slip knot. And then you can tighten it up to your hook by holding the knot and pulling on your free tail. 
and then that's how you get the yarn on the hook. So again, that's called a slip knot. Um, all of your crochet projects should start with that. So um, it's kind of taken for granted that that's that you know how to do that skill. Um, but that's how you get it on the hook. Now for a chain, you're gonna hold your hook in. If you're right-handed, you're right hand. If you're left-handed, you will hold it in your left hand, probably. And then you're going to hold your working yarn, which is not this cut tail, it's the other yarn, in your other hand. Um, I like to kind of loop it through so that it's over my index finger and over my pinky and then under the others. Um, this just helps me with making sure there's no knots coming up, making, you know, not tangled. Um, and it helps me feel when the yarn's getting tight and I have to pull some out of my um, skein. But you don't have to hold it this way. By all means, hold it whatever way is comfortable. There's really no right way. Um, in terms of holding your hook, there's two main ways that you can hold the hook. You can hold it as I do, which is called a pencil grip. So I hold it just like I do my pen or pencil when I'm writing. Um, you can also hold it, it's called a knife grip. So instead of having your hand under and holding it like a pencil, you kind of have your hand over it, you have it in your thumb and your index finger there and your other fingers are kind of laying on it. And you can work with your hook this way as well. That's called a knife grip. Um, I, I use the pencil grip usually, um, with the exception being when I'm working with jumbo or really bulky yarn, I might go to a knife grip just cause it gives me a little more force, um, is a little bit less stress on my hands and wrists. But for most projects, I use the pencil grip, but again, choose whatever you want. So for the slip stitch or sorry, we already did a slip knot. Now we're going to do a chain. So for the chain, you have your yarn already on your hook, and then you are going to use your working yarn and you do what's called a yarn over. So you take your yarn and put it over your hook. You don't want to do a yarn under like this, where the yarn's under the hook. You want to do yarn over. So I put the yarn over the hook. And then I'm going to capture that yarn in the hook on my crochet hook. And I'm going to pull that through the loop that's on the hook. Okay. And then you can see that it made our very first chain stitch. And then we still have a loop on our hook and we do that again. So yarn over, capture that yarn, which is called drawing up and then you pull it through the loop. So you're drawing up a loop. Okay, so we yarn over, we hook, and we pull it through the loop. Now, when you're doing this, one of the challenges and one of the keys is keeping the size of this loop on your hook consistent for all of your, all of your chains. So, that's where this practicing the chain will get you nice and quick and keep it consistent. Um, and I'm using both how hard I'm pulling the hook, but also how fast I'm letting my working yarn go through my fingers to maintain that consistent tension. So all of my chain stitches look very similar. Um, so that's what we're, that's what we're practicing with this project while also getting something functional out of it. So um, you don't feel like you're just sitting there chaining away for no reason. You're gonna make something. So for this bracelet, we're gonna chain 30 times, okay? So I'm gonna do that now. One, two, three, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Okay, so there's my chain 30. And now I'm going to do what's called a slip stitch. So a slip stitch, I guess technically is another crochet stitch, but it's actually basically the same as the chain. You're going to be yarning over and pulling through your loop, but you're gonna go through another stitch first. So I'm gonna make this chain into a circle. So I'm just bringing my beginning part of the chain over and I'm gonna go through that first chain stitch. Um, 
you can go technically through any of the spots of it. Um, there are debates on what's right. And if you want more information about that, again, you can go to my blog. There's a whole post about working into the foundation chain. Um, and you can read about that, but for our purposes, you can go wherever you want, as long as you're in that first chain and not trying to go through your slip knot. If you go through your slip knot, you're gonna loosen it up and possibly cause it to unravel, but you're going through your first chain. You can go through whichever kind of loops on that chain you want. So I'm just going to go through right here. And so I'm going to just kind of hold that all together and I'm going to yarn over. And now you can see, because I did go through that loop, there are two loops on my hook and I'm just going to go through both of them instead of one. And this is a slip stitch. So I yarn over, I hook that yarn, and then I'm just going to pull it through both of those. And then that just makes this a circle. So now for this bracelet, I'm just going to chain 30 again. Um, so I did my slip stitch and I'm going to chain 30 and then I'm going to do that slip stitch again. And this is just making the, the start of the bracelet. So chain 30 again, three, as you can see, when I chain, um, I move my hand up toward the base of my hook every four or five stitches. So that was five. Now I'm gonna move this hand up and that just gives me um, more control over that tension. But again, do what feels comfortable for you. There's not really a right or wrong here. So I'm at eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 28, 29, 30. So I did 30 again and now I just want to make this a circle again. So I'm gonna bring around to the first chain of this next set. So that's right here. Um, put it through my one of my loops and then yarn over and pull through both of those loops on my hook. And there is the first set of two for my bracelet. Now, if you're gonna be doing different colors here, you can go ahead and change colors or um, you can keep going with the same color. I'm gonna keep going with the same color. At the end, I'll show you how to fasten that off, um, which if you're changing colors, you would do every two, um, what I did on this one, was I fastened off after two, just like this right here, I fastened off and then started a new one. Um, but I'm just gonna do it all together and I'll show you how to fasten off once I get done with six of them. So pick back up my project and I'm just gonna do that again. I'm gonna do that four more times until I get six. So um, chaining 30, slip stitching to the beginning, chain 30, slip stitch to the beginning. And I'm just gonna keep doing that. So. We'll come back after I've got six of them done. All right, so here I have six loops done. And now I'm gonna show you what you do after you finish the six loops. And then again, I'll show you how to fasten off, um, which if you wanted to change colors, you would do every couple of, of circles. So after you finish your last chain 30 slip stitch together. You don't wanna fasten off there cause you need to make your loop to go around all of them. So I'm going to chain 24 here. So let's do that. Okay. So what we're gonna do with this now is we're gonna wrap it around our loops. Um, to make this easier, what I do recommend is actually cutting some, your yarn, it just makes it easier. So I have my scissors here and I'm just gonna cut my yarn. I am leaving quite a bit of extra yarn here um, to go ahead and um, finish it after. Now I'm just gonna take it and wrap it around. You can take your hook out here and put it back in after two, which is what I'm gonna do because this is kind of annoying doing it with the hook. So I just make my loop real big so it's easy to get my hook back in. And I'm just gonna wrap this through here. Um, I'm gonna do four times. So let me get it 
a little bit tighter so that I can get my four times that I want. Um, you can do however many times you want, but we're going to wrap it four times and then you're going to put your hook back through and then you're going to fasten this because you don't want it to come unraveled. So we're going to go back to where we started that if I can find it. So it's attached right here. Maybe. Okay. I promise I can find this. This is the only problem with only using one color. It's kind of hard to see. Okay. It's right there. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to slip stitch right to the beginning of that. Um, 24 chain that I did. So just go through and slip stitch it. Now, Here's where we're gonna talk about fastening off. Okay, so fastening off is how you finish your crochet project. Um, and this is relevant to all of crochet. So to fasten off, you just did your last chain um, slips. We just did a slip stitch, but basically your last chain. And um, now we're gonna make basically a knot. So I'm going to yarn over one more time and I'm going to pull that through the loop, but instead of just leaving it like that, like a chain, I'm going to pull it all the way through and then I'm going to tighten that down to make it a knot. And you can see that that fastens it. It does make, make it a knot there so it can't or won't unravel. And then that's the end of it. That's my bracelet. And then you have to deal with your tails here that you had at the beginning and the end. So um, for most projects, it says to weave in the ends, and that means to take either a needle or your crochet hook and go through all of the, not all of, you take your tails and you weave them in through stitches that were already formed to kind of hide it. And it also secures it more. Um, in the case of these kind of chain projects, I wasn't that concerned about them unraveling because they're not going to be going through the washer and things like that. Um, and I didn't really care if there was just an extra knot in it or anything. So I'm just going to tie an extra knot here, um, just to kind of make sure it is secure and then I'm just going to cut off my extra for both of the beginning and the end tails. But typically once you do uh, more crocheting, you're going to do, like I said, what's called weaving in the ends and that's taking these tails back and kind of hiding them inside stitches that you've already done. But for these projects, I'm not worried about that. So I'm just doing my knots and then I'm just gonna cut off my extra and get rid of that and just kind of hide those under. But there it is and it's just all one color, which um, you can do if you want or you can do the different colors and you have your bracelet. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I really hope it helps you just on your crocheting journey. Uh, again, if you want more info about this, head over to my blog at craftywithashy slash beginner crochet. That's where all of this information, all of the patterns for the projects that I showed you are available there. Um, if you liked this video, please subscribe to my channel for more content. I would really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Have an awesome day.